Let's start the show on the road. All right, good afternoon. This is Dr. Grice. This is MED 1408AAX, basic clinical procedures. Typically, it starts at 1 p.m., but today, because of the nursing uh, PAC, PAC meeting, it starts today at 1.30. So I saw the other two people who logged in earlier. Uh, you'll get credit. Don't worry. Um, but uh, today, November 6th, week four, next week is um, midterm. And your midterm will be in this format, 50 items, multiple choice, based on everything that we discussed weeks one through four. So that's in, including uh, today. So, but today will be an overall review because um, I pushed up stuff. So I'll, of course, have the, um, I'll, next week, around 1255, 1250, there's gonna, it'll say week five, um, midterm exam. You click on that and, and it'll be a Microsoft Word document. You open up the Word document, you take the exam, and the only thing I need is an email stating items one through 50 and what are your answers, that's it. I don't need a copy of the exam with you highlighting uh, the answers, that takes too long and also it's just messy. So just one through 50 answers and make sure your answers match and make sure everything's all good. All right, and, I'll, and it'll be right here in announcements. So what are we going over today? Today we're gonna go over what's required, what, uh, what's uh, required reading items for, um, uh, for next week's uh, midterm, which will be uh, Friday, November 13th at uh, 1 p.m. promptly. And by 2.15 p.m., um, I won't close the exam, but for every minute after 2.15 p.m., you, uh, you send me the email because emails have timestamps. Um, there'll be one point taken off, okay? So there, there'll be more than enough time. So what will you need to know? We had discussions that talked about angry patients. We also had discussions that talk about... Um, well, not a discussion discussion, but we also talked about the nervous patient. If you go into your textbook, remember at the end of the chapters, there's, there's these like, um, uh, not a to-do list, but protocol sheets that's saying step one, step two, step three. Read through those because they have helpful hints regarding to deal with the angry patient, regarding how do I deal with uh, pediatric patients, how do I deal with the nervous patient. So there, um, um, there are... Um, good things there. Now, if you look at my notes, let's look at these notes from week one as an example, all right? They're not really notes, it's just an outline that has everything that I could, uh, that I could ask. So one of the things that I could ask is any case that we went over. And if I have a case for you, I'm gonna ask things like, what is the chief complaint? What is the history of present illness? Is there a diagnosis? Is there a differential diagnosis? Do you know the difference between a diagnosis and a differential diagnosis? Diagnosis is the definitive. You have this thing. Differential are the things that the doctor is thinking of. And because we had this in a discussion, do you know what MRSA is? Do you know what VERSA is? And do you know the, uh, the drug of choice for both? Um, and remember, the pages don't quite match, but the chapters match. So uh, chapter six, basic safety and control, you'll see that there's, um, uh, there's topics which you need to know. Um, and the big thing that's also in your anatomy physiology is, do you know the cycle of infection? So do you know what a pathogen is, the carrier, right? Um, endogenous infection versus an exogenous infection. Endogenous is from endo, from inside. Exogenous is from the outside. Um, there's a figure 6-7. It's not on page 106, uh, but it's in the chapter. You need to know that. You need to know uh, the parts of the cycle of infection. Which comes first? What does it mean to be a susceptible host? Um, just like COVID. COVID doesn't hit those who are not susceptible. COVID only hits uh, people who are immunocompromised. And when you get sick, that's how you get sick. Um, the big thing regarding asepsis, um, hand washing and um, uh, disinfection versus um, san sanitization versus disinfection versus sterilization. And I believe I have notes as well there. 
Here's some quick hygiene, but this stuff too is golden right here. Um, uh, procedure 4142, communicating with the angry patient, and that's in chapter four. You could look that up, but uh, procedure six, that's aseptic hand washing. Um, now, when do you use alcohol hand disinfection? Don't worry about this topic because nowadays everything is what? Because of COVID, everything is aseptic hand washing, clinical scrub only to the level of your wrist, okay? And how to deglove, eh, it's good for lab, but not really good for an exam. So when you look at notes, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at, okay, what does he find important? Anything else, nice to know. But if the professor puts down uh, that's, uh, that's important, then that's something to look at. Chapter nine is the other chapter uh, during our first week. This is huge. The levels of asepsis. If this doesn't come out, I do not know what will. So sterilization is the highest level. And in order to get the sterilization, you must get through sanitization, disinfection, and then sterilization. The table on 9-1, it's not on page 132, but it's on a table 9-1 in uh, chapter nine. There's a list of antiseptics and disinfectants. Know all of them, know what they're used for. Know that you cannot use bleach on rubber. It's not, it's not used. But if there's blood on the floor, you must use 10% bleach. And that chart is there. And also um, you could watch uh, uh, the lecture as well. What is an autoclave? What does it do? This looks like a beautiful both A and B question. Autoclave utilizes both pressure and heat to sterilize, but I cannot put things in the autoclave until they've been sanitized and disinfected and then ready for sterilization. Uh, again, cross this out. When to use hand sanitizers? We don't really use them anymore. Everything's hand washing before and after every patient. Um, in the past, it's been utilize hand sanitizers if it's a non-invasive patient. Nowadays, anything. You, you, uh, you just hand sanitize all the time uh, because of the, the new and enhanced uh, COVID protocols. Let me just check who's here. Uh, whoever's on that Galaxy S20, kindly send me a um, instant message on your full name and so I can record it so uh, you'll get credit for today's lesson. So when you're looking uh, at things, right? Microscope parts, eh, nice to know, might have it, might not, but you should know it from your anatomy and physiology. Thank you, Ms. Wah. I'll try to remember, yet you're on a Galaxy phone. Um, nice to know, hand washing, definitely know this hand washing rubric or how the protocol on how the hand washing goes. So I could ask stuff like this. Um, in the ward, do you use, uh, are you allowed to wear wedding bands or jewelry? Nope, you're not, right? When turning on the uh, faucet, do you use your hands? No, you either use like your elbow or, you know, uh, a paper towel or like us, it's either knee operated or foot operated, okay? Um, um, eh, we don't really use nail brushes and things of that matter, but your nails should be, there shouldn't be any white part of your nails. That's how short your nails should be in a clinical setting. And of course, remember pat dry on a dry towel or um, the, um, the surgical towels if necessary. You're not scrubbing your hands into it. So those are, the, those are the, some of the key stuff uh, regarding hand washing. And let's see now. Hand washing, uh, MRSA versa, we already talked about that. Check your quizzes to see if you have a grade. If you don't have a grade and you did it, uh, shoot me an email because, or if you have a zero when you obviously took it, uh, shoot me an email because um, sometimes this glitches out. Chapter 36, chapter 37, no soap, no POMR, SOMR. And here's the chapter 36 outline. And again, don't pay attention to the page numbers, pay attention only chapter. You gotta know SOAP, S-O-A-P. What does it mean? Know the different acronyms, CC, HPI, PMH. If I ask you about drinking or smoking, or if you smoke crack this morning, that's social history. But if I ask you, 
about uh, is your father or mother living? If not, what did they die of? That is family history. Any previous surgeries or hospital administrations? That's your PMH or past medical history. The big thing about chief complaint is patient's own words. The big thing about HPI is it has to be in reverse chronological history and only to the items related to the chief complaint. So for example, right now I'm having a gout attack. So I'm going to go to my doctor later, right? The, the main issue is what? The pain in my foot. I don't talk about my diabetes. I don't talk about my hypertension. I don't talk about anything else except what I came in for. Um, pain in my foot, but knowing my doctor would probably bother me and all these other things. Review of systems. Remember, we're only supposed to ask open-ended questions. The only time we ask yes or no questions is during the review of systems. And that's the one where you ask, um, hey, have you ever had a heart attack? Yes or no. Have you ever had lung disease? Yes or no. Have you ever had a breast mask? Yes or no. Have you ever had visual problems? Yes or no. He goes, so even if you answer yes, you don't elaborate on it. It's just a quick yes or no on a whole list of different systems. And it's to help the doctor narrow down the, um, um, the diagnosis and also helps the doctor see if there's any other comorbidities or helps the doctor see maybe there might be another problem that you're not complaining about yet. Know your patient's rights, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. Interview skill sets, these are crazy important. Know what active listening is and mirroring techniques. Know, uh, know some nonverbal cues like guarding and grimacing. This is pertaining to pain. Guarding is when the patient tries to cover up the area that they don't want you to, to, to go touch. When patients are typically lying to you or they're trying to de-stress something, they will have lack uh, they either have a lack or excessive eye contact. Either way, that's something that you should look for, right? Open versus a closed posture. An open posture, uh, take a look at when people are on a first date. If their knees are facing each other and their face is directly facing each other, that means that's a nonverbal clue or nonverbal cue, C-U-E-S, that's telling you that things are uh, going okay. But if there's guarding, uh, the hands are folded, the patient doesn't want to directly speak to you or look at you, that is of issue. Look at always the holistic or the big picture, okay? So when we're looking at the patient, we're not only looking at their health status, their physical status, I'm also wanting to know is how's their financial status? Because are they worried about other things? How's their um, relationship with their family? How's their, um, how's their uh, professional life? How's things going on the... Um, going on at work versus home. Always ask permission, always gain per, uh, consent. Uh, beware of sensitive topics. The big question on sensitive topics are social history when I ask about sexual orientation and things of that matter. The six C's of charting, really important, big, big topic on your medical assistant registry exam. The different types of contents in a medical chart, which also apply to electronic medical records, right? That's the SOMR and POMR. Look that up if you don't know what that is. Um, abbreviations, you gotta know them all. Um, so if you don't remember them from your medical terminology, know all, um, um, and I'm, I'll only ask about the pertinent ones. And last but not least, how do you talk to a person with pain? PQRST. Let me look for an, uh, a nice uh, graphic because we, we all love. Here's a nice graphic. P, regarding pain. What brings on the pain or provokes it and what makes it better or relieves it? Pro provocation or palliation. That's what, the, that's what P means. Quality, is it dull, stabbing, burning, sharp, achy? There's different kinds, right? I always ask my patients, does it feel like a knife or does it feel like a fist? Region or radiation, where exactly does it hurt and does it spread? Severity, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the most awful pain in the world, what is it? And last but not least, the when, the time. When did the pain start? Is it always there or does it come and go, intermittent? If it comes and goes, how long does it last? OK, 
okay? And that's the mnemonic for uh, remembering to uh, uh, what to ask when your patient is complaining of pain. And if you look here real quick, um, here, this is like the pain scale, you know, hurts a little bit or it's a lot, 10 being the worst pain in your life. And remember, male patients tend to exaggerate. Female patients, especially those who've experienced childbirth, tend to uh, downplay their pain. And especially elderly female patients outright lie about how much it hurts. They always say, I'm okay, I'm all right. When meanwhile they're crying, they have tachycardia and uh, high blood pressure secondary to uh, pain states. Um, so uh, that's history taking. Chapter 37, vitals and measurements. Know all your normal values. Okay, so look up what tachycardia, bradycardia, tachypnea, bradypnea. Know the normal heart rate. Uh, it's the same as pulse rate. Know blood pressure. Know what's normal blood pressure. That's the chart in your textbook. Also know what the normal respiratory rate and um, the meanings of these medical terms with respect to the uh, actual number. So a classic example is um, tachycardia. Eucardia or normal cardia is anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. And you'll see that in your textbook. So greater than 100 beats is tachycardia. Less than 60 is typically bradycardia. And 60 to 100 is norm normal cardia. And remember, you also have character. Is it bounding? As in you could almost see uh, um, the, you know, on the artery, like that your artery was jumping up, almost out of its seat. And thready means I can barely touch it, like you can barely feel a thread. Either situation, no bueno. Bounding, they're probably on, they're probably scared out of their mind or on crack cocaine. And thready, they're probably going into a shock. That's when you can barely feel the pulse. Uh, normal ranges, I already said that. Pulse oximetry, uh, I believe the textbook says 95. My lecture says 97. So uh, pulse ox of 97% or greater, okay? Uh, anthropometry, measurement of human, right? Heights, weights, and uh, blood pressure. Eh, I wouldn't worry about it too much uh, uh, for this particular chapter. What you need more to know about is normal. What's normal blood pressure? And what's borderline blood pressure? Okay. So that is hand washing. That's week two. And I got multiple videos and I got multiple things out there. Uh, week three, uh, emergency notes. Okay. Um, that's what we discussed last week, and that's chapter 57, and it's basic emergency stuff. And again, there's a case associated with it. What is the gold five minute, uh, golden five minutes? Uh, if you recall the lecture, that is uh, if my patient goes into either cardiac or respiratory arrest, within five minutes, if nothing is done, my patient will have irreversible brain damage. This is the reason why we're so hell-bent on time, especially when it comes to cardiac or respiratory arrest. What should be in your go bag or your crash kit or crash cart? What are the typical contents? Also need to know why they are in, why they are there. And um, uh, procedure 57-1 um, has, uh, uh, has those answers in there. Six steps of emergency care, the guidelines. How do you deal with emergencies on the phone? What are the typical questions that you should be ready to answer? Know what your PPE, PPE are and how, do you, uh, and how do you utilize them? And remember, for now, because of COVID, every answer is glove up, mask up. Every answer is glove up, mask up, right? Uh, know the different uh, types of burns. Know, the un know and understand what is the rule of nines. Choking victim. Yes, you know the universal sign of choking, but do you know the management for choking? The Heimlich maneuver and uh, also uh, stomach compressions, which we showed on the video. Know your different types of fractures. What's the difference between a sprain and strain? 
is a fracture the same thing as a dislocation? And no, they are not. Okay, and how to manage musculoskeletal issues and their steps in your, um, uh, in your textbook. Head injury, what is really the big thing? in Head injury is LOC or loss of consciousness, okay? Know your different types of wounds and what level does, does it affect? Does it affect the epidermis, dermis, or subcutaneous uh, tissues? What do you do with poisons? Should I make them vomit? Should I make them vomit? What is the poison control center? And what information do I need to know to speak to the poison control center? Heat stroke, frostbite, hypothermia, sunburn, which is first degree uh, burn. Nice to know. Diarrhea, major concern is, uh, oh, by the way, major concern of the burn are twofold. Um, uh, infection and dehydration. Major concern for diarrhea is dehydration especially with the very young and the very old. And we already discussed in lecture the different types of dehydration. We also discussed different types of shock. We also discussed anaphylaxis and the man medical management of anaphylaxis uh, is uh, EpiPen or epinephrine. Mm, hyperglycemia versus hypoglycemia, eh, nice to know. These things are nice to know, but you definitely need to know what an AMI is. You definitely need to know what a CVA is. You need to know how to diagnose a CVA via the FAST method or the acronym FAST. Know what that is. Know what a defibrillator is and what does that do for you as well. Okay, and these, eh, nice to know, but we focused on these other, in, um, these emergencies. Okay, medical history form, no, 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 no. So uh, blood pressure, mensuration, which is taking heights and weights. Let's look at that. And I already have here your practice midterm exam. Remember, this is practice. This is not the real exam, but it's the real exam is going to look just like it. So let's look at this mensuration. And mensuration means heights and weights. In all procedures, you always introduce yourself, you always explain the procedure, and you always garner consent. Um, what else? And yeah, this is more for lab. Yeah, you know what? Don't really look at this too much. This is more for laboratory. I changed my mind. Not gonna quiz you on that. But right now you see that's more than enough for 50 items. Topics one, topic two, topic three. All right. Now what's due next week? Uh, just a discussion. There's no other homework right uh and uh it says during today's practice like typically we would practice just find is there any difference using uh an electronic or a digital blood pressure monitor or your typical aneroid cuff which one's better and have some data okay have some has a, uh, have some evidence that's the only thing that's due next week um because next week what do you have you should be studying for your uh, midterm exam. And please note that your midterm is only like a midterm grade. It's not, it's not a real grade yet that gets put in um, uh, your transcript. So you have five more weeks to go fix that, just assuming if you did, did poorly. So if you could see here, it's very straightforward, right? Um, nothing really tricky. And it's all intents and purposes is for its uh, um, it's what do you call it? It's four, four chapters, give or take. Does anyone have any questions on what's going to be in the exam? How's the exam going to go down? And the timing and all that jazz. No, sir. I think you said it pretty straightforward in the beginning. Okie dokie. And if that's the case, kindly log off. I got that you guys were all here. Mm -hmm. well. Thank you, sir. Have a nice afternoon. Go rest. <laughs> it was Ms. Great, now I'm forgetting. I'll find it. Oh, you put it in here. Oh yeah, Ms. Bates, okay. All right, all right, Ms. Bates, have a good one. If you don't have anything else going on or need any help with, have a nice day.